What's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Bird's Eye View of Comfort. I'm your host T-Bird. June is here. We had a mild May. It's gonna be straight up. It was unlike most Mays here in North Carolina. We were still experiencing cool uh, mornings. We were experiencing lows in the mid 70s to even low 70s. Sometimes even high 60s. Like it was not what we wanted, but the call volume was there, which was good. Got a lot of maintenance services knocked out. Today we do have a full schedule, quite a few maintenance services. So people are starting to think about the air conditioning units and the need for them to be serviced, which is great. But I've got a good one today. We're going to be rolling up on Josh. This call was a referral from a good friend of mine. His name's Barry and we go way back. I mean high school days so one of his neighbors they're having issues very unique story here i don't know if they purchased the unit online or where the unit came from but they purchased a high efficiency communicating goodman system and she tells me we had a guy um an old school hvac guy who she says only dealt with single stage equipment seems like he's could have been retired or something so he installs the unit last year after summer she tells me hasn't had any issues through the winter but now when they try to cool it trips the breaker pops the fuse something like that just just stops so the guy has given up Literally, she said he's come out there, hasn't been able to figure it out, was on the phone with tech support. I said, don't worry, you're in good hands with T-Birds. Because we are private label Goodman dealers, we do have experience installing communicating equipment, Comfort Bridge technology. So yeah, this should be interesting. Um, we'll go over a few things here that we could be looking at. At this point, we may be in the situation, shout out to Mikey Pipes, the phrase, hacks bring me stacks. Now, what does that mean? You know, even this, though the system was installed last year, it's probably not been installed properly. Probably things that need to be corrected. And we'll propose that and we'll make money off of somebody else's wrongdoing. I mean, this may be a lesson to the client of not hiring this type of person in the future, but they will be in good hands. And I'm excited to see what the problem is that this gentleman could not figure out. Some things we're gonna be looking for and some questions to ask. She did say it was registered, so it was registered. If it would be a part malfunction, it, you know, Goodman should be able to help us out with a part if it was registered correctly. Um, but questions that we see in typical stuff on a uneducated install that, that we're gonna be looking for is, is this an AHRI matchup? What is AHRI? AHRI, is Air Conditioning, Heating, and Refrigeration Institute. What they do as a third-party service, they protect the client. So every manufacturer that creates uh, central ACs or any units and label them in the efficiency ratings, that is SEER, Seasonal Energy Efficiency Rating. HRI holds them accountable, meaning that your contractor has to put certain pieces of equipment together to get that SEER. So we're gonna be seeing if it is actually matching up. So did they get the right equipment, okay? Is the equipment even sized right for the area that it's heating and cooling? That's another thing. Is the ductwork size right? Because this home was built in 1985. So using existing ductwork, we'll find out. If it is, it may definitely be too small. That's what we usually see. Could be too large, but we're usually on the other end. It's usually too small. And two, refrigerant line set. Is that the right size? Um, is the electrical up to code? These are all things we see in these situations where somebody has a subpar contractor install equipment. So we'll be looking at all that. Um, since she did say Comfort Bridge, uh, we will be looking at either a, I believe, 18 sear two stage, or it could be the big dog 20 sear inverter. So. Should be interesting to say the least. So I'm gonna head out, meet Josh, and we'll catch you in a little bit. All right, so the home's over there. This is the referral here, my boy Barry. That's right. <laughs> Shout out to Barry, um, longtime friend. Hit him up if you're in the greater Charlotte area. Anthony Silver Pools, new luxury pools. That's right. Renovations and service. All over Charlotte, all, all over the way Charlotte. up to Raleigh too. Heck yeah. If you would have told me 15 years ago, while I was doing hood rat shit in this neighborhood, that I would be out here filming a vlog for HVAC, I would have looked at you like um, you were smoking crack or something. So, here we are. All right, T-Bird machine's rolling up. Look at it go. Woo-wee! The big bird. All right, so Josh was the winner of our prize um, for a contest that included some tool credit from our supplier. He chose to get this Milwaukee fan. It's gonna be good for the attic this summer. The manometer. 
Okay, field piece Bluetooth manometer. We should be able to put that one to use here in a little while. And that's it. I saved some money on the back side. You saved some for a little, little extra day. A little rainy day. So I get here, I walk around the house, and um, looks like the guy they hired. Uh, I don't know if this was her client's choice, but the old unit's right here. <laughs> so much for the cleanup after a uh, job done. See what we can find. All right, into the hole we go. It's like a pretty roomy crawl space. Well, there's the old air handler, not removed. That's classic. Here we got something. Well, garden hose drain line, okay. Cool. What do we have on the model? ABP TC 61, that's um, five ton, yeah. Serial 22, so was definitely made last year. So. Internally, there's a 50 amp breaker. Um, as you can see, you've got your standard disconnect that runs to a dual point setup, and they have a double lug going into the second breaker. So a 50 amp setup for 15 kW of heat plus the furnace. Over here, that would be a, a 15 amp breaker and a 45 amp breaker, the HKS 15. <clears throat> it's like they kept the old train electronic air cleaner. I don't think it's plugged up though. Or if it is, it's not working. So there's also no type of sealant on the uh, unit to that. No primary drain safety. But we'll keep digging and see why this thing is not cooling. I've already got it figured out. He said he's already got it figured out. What was it doing? Popping a fuse or tripping the breaker? Uh, tripping the breaker. Tripping a breaker. So first the white wire for auxiliary heat is in the W terminal. So in cooling mode, that runs the heat strips all the time on the Honeywell T-Series thermostats. Secondly, it's got 15 kW worth of heat on a 50 amp double pole breaker. Okay. So it's, anytime those heat strips run, it's going to trip the breaker. Oh, well, that'll do it, so, yeah. So we... auxiliary heat wouldn't have been running in heating mode because it was in the wrong terminal to be energized so it's all adding up that's where that's where we're at yeah so the fact is it was never set up for heat right but it ran all winter without auxiliary heat and now since it was wired wrong it's running the heat strips when it's trying to cool and the electrical work is not up to specs so yeah we're gonna check the outdoor too um, we're gonna offer to remove the old equipment and we'll check, make sure the line set's the right size for this piece of equipment. Also want to check AHR and match up like I spoke about earlier and see if this unit should be running with whatever's outside. We'll see what's outside. So, we've been here for 18 minutes. Figured out what this guy gave up on already. And uh, also found that the equipment's not even wired up to run two stages. So... Yeah, looks like this guy's been collecting HVAC parts for a while. Shine your light over there. Over there. <laughs> we, got, we got the train museum down here. <laughs> look at that. Look, there's another blower wheel right there. Man, okay. It would be a great day for some pool action. All right, let's see what we got outside here. Thank goodness for Goodman. Let's check the ball. So it's a GSZ 18, I think. Yeah, like I had said, the 18. It's like the other unit for upstairs is, is definitely a uh, inverter driven, some sort. I hear it ramping up now. Um, but guys, don't get train washed, okay? Don't get train washed out here. But let's check, let's see what we got. Yep, XZ. A few years old. Very quiet, very quiet. All right, so what do we have to say about this here? Uh, so it is wired out here for two-stage. Um, they just undug your comfort bridge plug with still the transformer in it. So what we're going to do is go back with the comfort bridge set up. Each stage will work individually properly with the indoor unit. Yes, we need these people to get the full benefit from the, uh, from the equipment. 
you know they bought this unit and the guy who installed it obviously didn't know how to set it up right so we'll set it up right and uh yeah it is a beautiful thing to see my truck matching the fleet now er gang so option sheet on what we've got so far here we got two low voltage repairs because we have to correct wiring between the thermostat air handler and the air handler and the outdoor unit and then also correct the um heat kit so that's got to come down to 10 kW, um, which is all it really needs. Then we've got primary drain safety, um, token to the air handler. That unit calls for inch and eighth suction line, three eighths liquid. So that right there is gonna be something that should be done to get this unit running properly and living its best life. So that's something I'll put the screenshot in here we found on Goodman MFG for the uh, unit itself. And also surge protection for this nice fancy piece of equipment would definitely help prevent any sort of major repairs needed due to any surges lightning brownouts and that all right so we did get approval to go ahead with the wiring repairs and we're going to be changing the breaker for the heat strips and he's got the fan in action live action nice so this here is the plug that was in there and being used, which is wired legacy, meaning um, there's normal wires, just the comfort bridge type you're using instead of your normal multiple wires, you're going with the smaller plug there. So we're gonna make that happen and get this unit operate how it's designed to operate. All right, so here we are now. Instead of the legacy plug that was there, we went, and we went one, two, and then in R and C, R is your power. One and two are communicating with each other back and forth between all the equipment. And on these type of systems, um, they do have a uh, dual capacitor here, but you see nothing's hooked up to the fan side, so they could have gone with a single. But the reason of that is your fan motor is electronically controlled. So we'll get this thing fired back up here and um, let you see it in action. All right, back down to the air handler. So you've got two um, sets of wires here. One going thermostat to air handler, one going air handler back outside to the heat pump. And I did check, I'll loop in screen recordings, but I did check this is the only 18 sear matchup air handler. So they are operating at an official 18 sear, even though line set's not appropriate size. So that will affect some. Okay, so we got this wired up proper here. We got our um, communicating plug there, and then from thermostat, so everything's good here. Josh's gonna go change the breaker, and we'll fire this thing up, test from there, see if there's anything else we need to adjust. All right, so we're closing in on firing the system up. Um, 30 minutes into uh, days of trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After the guy gave up, we are applying power. We're gonna test cooling um what's crazy is this unit was installed last year and this will be first time it's ever seen cooling we are june 2nd 83 degrees outside and this unit ran all last year winter season without heat strips so i'm sure that was a marathon for the outdoor unit but we'll fire it up and uh do some tests first test of the new tool right here too small to hold. too small So we'll get that set up. One there, oh, it's got magnet. Okay. We do love some fill piece tools around here. Also, we do have lift off. The blower is running. So, it's first time. And it's staging correctly as well. And staging, okay. We'll check the thermostat out one time before we get out of here, but. We're gonna do this and head to the outdoor unit. Also gonna make sure our ductwork size right. And uh, we really wanna make sure this thing is good to go after we come and save the day. So for you techs watching that don't wanna uh, take static, think it takes too long, that was probably a minute to put those in with the unit bit. And then we got action. There we go. Is that outdoor already? Yep. So we'll check the outdoor, but that's our readings from the crawl. We are probably 40 feet away from the outdoor unit. 
says the TXV system, obviously, with it being 18 here. So there is another return on the other side, and um, yeah, we were at 0.4 before the filter. So looking good, static side. Got some probes in to check the split, one there, one over on the supply. See if we can get zoomed in. We got 70 coming in. What we got coming out? 70 to 53. Ladies and gentlemen, that is 17 degrees. Besides the wiring crap show, but this thing's fired up pretty nice. All right, so we ended up with 19 degree split. Shout out to Field Piece. Um, you know, we're always looking for free tools. So, you know, if you happen to see this, hit me up. Hit me up. And for the first time, this thing is cooling. All right, where's the breaker we swapped out? I swapped out. Yeah. Oh, it's inside. Okay. So yeah. So fuel piece again. That's what we're giving our readings on the uh, app. Okay. So we are operating with this thermostat here, and just to clarify, the unit in the crawl, so the air handler, is communicating with this. Um, your legacy mode, your normal red, white, yellow. So now those two communicate, but our communication from the inside air handler to the outdoor, that's the comfort bridge. That is the communication that's going on. That's the two wire. So we got everything um, fired back up and we'll uh, kind of do a wrap up recap here in just a little bit. But um, yeah, we're cooling, cooling down here already we had it held out so it would stay on but we're looking good what's up guys i'm here with a little recap um, i wasn't able to capture the line set replacement in action um, but i do have an update here i want to show you guys the difference in the size that was there that was left original and not replaced with the install and what we changed and, and how big it should be. So the line set was kept original at seven eighths. We changed to an inch and an eighth. And here's the difference side by side, old versus new. So here's the old one on the left. And that is the inch and an eighth there. So could you see how that would cause issues um, not being at manufacturer specs? I believe it's key. Um, we see contractors take shortcuts all the time sometimes not even educating clients so really you're going to need to make the right decision when it comes to an install on what kind of contractor you're using if they do the right thing if they replace line sets because yes would that system have ran sure and most of the time clients can go unaware that that's even supposed to happen you know you're supposed to make these changes so we're seeing this a lot with sear 2 equipment line sets got to be changed um you know just got to do it it's one of our core values one of the things we talk about is doing the right thing, even when the right thing is hard. It's easy to take shortcuts, but we don't do it. And then we have here, we did remove the equipment that was left. Um, here's an air handler that was just hanging out in their basement there. So that'll do it for this episode. Thanks for joining and stay tuned for the next one.